In this video, we're going to start taking a look at what it takes to get Oracle eBusiness Suite version 12 up and running on a Linux server. Uh, for this example, I'm going to run this on my laptop through a virtual environment. Oracle provides a free tool called VirtualBox, and you can go to Oracle's website and download this. Uh, it's free. Uh, it's available to anybody who's interested in it. The latest and greatest version as of the middle of August 2011, you can see here, is uh, version 4.1.2. Uh, you certainly don't have to use Oracle VirtualBox if you have another virtual machine that you want to work with or you have a, uh, a Linux server that's dedicated. You can certainly use that. Uh, I just use this uh, on my laptop so I can do uh, demonstrations pretty easily. And you can see that I have uh, an Oracle uh, Linux version here running in the background. So before you can even do this, you obviously have to download some pieces of the software. If you Google Oracle VirtualBox, uh, you can find easy downloads for that. To get the other pieces of software that you're going to need to get started, uh, Oracle has a site called the eDelivery site. And if you go to eDelivery.Oracle.com and stick a Linux at the end of your URL here, you'll see, whoops, if I spelled Oracle right, that might help. Uh, you'll see that here's a place where you can download uh, Oracle Linux and Oracle VM. Oracle VM is kind of the enterprise-wide uh, edition of VirtualBox, and this is a true enterprise tool. If you don't need that much power, uh, Oracle VirtualBox is good for you know running locally on your uh, laptop or your machine to do demos. So if I go into Oracle Linux and VM here, log in with my password. agree to all of the conditions and terms that are out there, you'll see that I have the ability to download a whole bunch of different products that Oracle provides. Uh, again, VM is the uh, enterprise-wide uh, virtualization tool that Oracle uh, sells. Oracle Linux, if I want to get the 64-bit versions out there, I can click Go, and you can see there's a whole bunch of different versions. Uh, version 6, different versions of 5. Uh, I've been using 5, Update 5 for a long time, so this is the one that I downloaded and installed locally on my laptop. So that's the one I'm running right now. If you want to get the eBusiness Suite software, uh, it's also on the eDelivery site, but you don't put Linux at the end of your URL. You just go to kind of the main site right there, Software Delivery Cloud, and because I'm logged in already, it's not asking me to log in again, but I do have to agree to all of the terms. And as soon as I do that, I then have the ability to see all the different products that are out there. So here's the eBusiness Suite. There's downloads there for uh, the 12.1 version of the Oracle eBusiness Suite. If you're interested in Hyperion, JD Edwards, there's a lot of really cool things here. One thing to note is that the next generation of eBusiness Suite, Oracle Fusion Applications, is now available for download. So uh, you can grab that and see the direction that Oracle is going in. We'll have uh, a couple of videos to talk about the installation of Oracle Fusion applications. But for right now, we're just going to focus on the uh, release 12 version of the Oracle eBusiness Suite. So if I pick that and say I want Linux 64, and go through and you can see there's a, a ton of downloads that you have to go through. If I click on the eBusiness Suite 1211 Media Pack, you can see there's rapid installs, there's the RDBMS, there's all of these uh, tons of downloads that you have to go through to get all the different pieces that you need. So uh, you want to make sure that you have a lot of bandwidth when you're downloading these things. So assuming you've downloaded the software and you've installed uh, Oracle VirtualBox and then created a virtual machine with Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5, that's pretty much where we stand right here. So I haven't put any kind of um, additional pieces of the operating system in yet. Uh, those are commonly referred to as RPMs, Red Hat Package Manager, and a lot of those are, are uh, different things that extend the functionality of the operating system. Haven't done any of those things yet. It's just a plain vanilla install of uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux 5, Update 5, and that's what we're going to move forward with. Through the course of the installation, we're going to come across a couple of errors that are going to uh, require us to go out there and uh, get other pieces of software that we can then download. So I'm going to walk through all of those steps, and hopefully I'll save you guys some time uh, that I had to spend going around doing things. I'm logged in as root right now. We don't want to run the software as root. We want to run the software as uh, who's going to own the, the, the software, which is the Oracle user. So if I go into System 
and under administration you can see I have this users and groups here so I can take a look you can see I already have an Oracle user created I'm going to create another user called Apple Manager you don't have to do that you can have uh, one owner own the entire system you can have the Oracle user own everything on your system but the common way of installing release 12 is to go through and have a couple of different users one to own the database software the Oracle database software and another user to own the uh, app actual application pieces the Apple manager so the first thing I'm going to do is you can see that I have two groups there I have an Oracle group and a virtual box group I'm going to go in there I'm going to add a couple of new groups one I'm going to call DBA and I'm going to call another group Apple Manager. And this makes administration a lot easier down the road if you follow the standard guidelines. And again, these are kind of de facto standards. These aren't you know written in stone that you have to do it this way. But it makes um, administering your system a lot easier down the road. So we have uh, the Oracle group. We have the Apple Manager group. We have the DBA group. I'm going to go back into Users. And for Oracle, I'm going to make his primary group DBA. So I'm going to make him a member of both of those groups, and I'm going to change the primary group here to DBA. I'm also going to create a new user, APPL MGR. That's the standard user. Again, you don't have to do it this way. It's just kind of the standard way that people have done it, and it makes administering your system a heck of a lot easier down the road. So uh, create Apple Manager. Click on OK. I'm going to add them to an existing group. So the primary group here kind of just created one for me. I'm going to double click on him and say, you know what? I don't want him to be in that group. I want him to be in the Apple Manager group. And I'm going to make that his primary group. So now I have an Oracle user. I have an Apple Manager user. I have the group set up. Uh, ready for me to go on to the next step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start up a terminal session. I'm still logged in here as root. I don't want to do anything as root. So I'm going to su over to my Oracle user. And su is just a super user. And I jump over into Oracle. So now I'm in the Oracle user. And uh, I'm on my home directory, which is created for me automatically, home slash Oracle. I'm going to create another directory underneath this one. And this is going to be my Oracle home moving forward, where I'm going to install all the eBusiness Suite pieces. So I'm going to make directory, and I'm going to call it EBS, eBusiness Suite. I can call it anything I want. I can put it anywhere I want. Uh, this is just an example. So if I CD over to EBS. I do a PWD. There's my uh, there's my home that I'm in right now. This is what I'm going to use as my main directory for installing all of the pieces that go along with the eBusiness Suite. So the next thing for me to do is to go ahead and actually start the installation. I've staged all of the CDs. You remember that download list that we looked at in Firefox a little while ago, all of those different uh, things that I downloaded. They're all in zip files. You have to explode them out and create all your directories. It's pretty, pretty simple to do. I've mounted all of those out there. So I'm going to hop over to that directory now. And you can see that I have a couple of directories there, start CD, or DB, AppDB. This is what all the directories will look like when you uh, unzip all of the files that you've downloaded from the e-delivery site for all of the e-business suite components. So the um, where I'm going to start executing is in start CD. And then we have to go a couple of directories in. We have to go to disk 1. And then... My network drive's a little slow here, so it's going to take a second to actually read all that information. Rapid Wizard. And you can see now that I have a bunch of files in this directory. One of them that I'm going to run here is the Rapid Wizard. I'm going to start that guy off. So for me to get the Rapid Wizard up and running, I just say look in this directory and go with Rapid Wizard. So I was thinking about it, I can tell you we're probably going to get an error message right off the bat here. Uh, one of the things that we have to do is tell the system that all of the different users who are out there, we're going to give them access to the X windowing system. 
and that's something that we normally have to do as the root user. So this may have been set up for me automatically when I installed the uh, version of um, Oracle Linux 5.5 on my system. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's the default now, but we'll see in a second when this comes up. So as you can see, we did in fact get the error message. Uh, it's basically saying we're trying to start an X Windows program and we're not being allowed to do that. So what we have to do is we have to go back as the root user and say we're going to go ahead and allow anybody who's on the system access to the X windowing environment. So I'm going to open up a new terminal here and you can see that um, I've logged into my X window environment as the root user. So anytime I start a new terminal session, it comes up as the root user. And it's a real simple command. It's just X host plus. And once that's uh, executed, anybody who's connected to the system now has access to the X windowing environment. So I'm going to go back here into my Oracle session. I'm going to run Rapid Wizard again, and this time it should allow me to go through and actually start running the installation. As you can see, now that I've set up the X host command, I now have the ability to run X Windows programs as the Oracle user. I'm going to stop the video here so we don't go too long. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start walking through the installation of the Rapid Wiz Wizard install so that we can get Oracle Applications Release 12.1 installed on our system.